the trial, God was there all the time. Amen. Uh, I, can I talk about them for a second? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Think about those guys for a second. Uh, they had no idea they were going to survive that uh, ordeal. Uh, their statement was uh, uh, whether um, uh, whether we are going to um, whether we survive this or not. You can you can kill us if you want to. He said, but we do know one thing: we're not going to bow down to you. Uh, but whether our God is going to deliver us or not, that was the statement I was looking for. They said, whether our God delivers us or not, one thing we know for certain, we will not bow down to you. In other words, whether we die or whether we live, we're still not going to bow down to you. And, and so the, uh, there was an uncertainty to the fact. They didn't know what the answer of God would be, but they did know God would answer. And uh, so I... I I just shared with you that this week's going to be a trial for somebody here. And when you're going through that, I want you to remember that. You don't know how he's going to answer, but you can be well assured he will. Amen. And in the midst of the hottest time of your trial, that's where you'll find God. Um, there's, um, to, to get it all started for you, we're, um, we're going to be looking at Philippians 9. Four, I should say chapter 4, verses 9 through 13. Uh, but before I, I start reading those verses to you, can I just tell you that, that, that without a relationship with the Prince of Peace, you're going to be hard-pressed to find any peace. Amen. Uh, you, uh, we, we look for folks that, uh, folks look for the opportunity to try to have some kind of a, a, a solemnness in, in their life or in their daily um, um, activities and circumstances, and guys, I got to tell you, it's a it's a absolutely a, 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 a fruitless pursuit unless you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, so, without the uh, without the Prince of Peace in your life, there really is no peace. Look at Philippians four nine. Uh, Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me. Do, and the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for listen to what Paul has to say. He was talking about their support of his ministry. Then he says, not that uh, you guys gave to me and I appreciate and you're giving me again and, and you wanted to give before, but there wasn't an opportunity for you to do so. And he says, not that I speak in respect of want. I don't have to have you supporting me, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. That's Philippians 4.11. Everybody has Philippians 4.13 highlighted. You need to highlight Philippians 4.11. Whatever, wherever, and however I am, I'm content. Amen. Whatever, wherever, however I am, I'm content. Whatever God has me going through, wherever God has me traveling, whatever God has brought my way is okay with me. I'm content. I don't have to be uh, uh, in, in the lap of luxury. I don't have to have all of my desires and my wants met. I can tell you today that I am okay in whatever state God has put me in. Listen to me for, please, please, please hear me tonight. One of the most destructive things in the lives of Christians today is we find folks that are upset with God because things ain't going the way we want them to go. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then we become discouraged with God and God's not ordained that way anyhow. God, the way that we want things to go is not God's will and here we are trying to get him to bless it. Yeah. Huh, yeah, amen. So it's, it's real important that you understand that, that you're not promised the prosperity of this world. Amen. No, listen, uh, there's things that come into our lives that we can't explain and we, we don't need to be too attached to this world anyway. Uh, it's in the songbook here. This world's not my home. I'm just passing through. 
My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. I, you, you can get way too comfortable with the, the things of this world. So let me go back to verse 11. He said, not that I speak in respect of want or lack of having my need met. He said, because I've learned, and I like those three words, four words, for I have learned. Uh, in other words, he, it, this didn't come natural. This was something, and you know how he learned it too, by the way, Keith, right? <laughs> Hard knocks, baby. You been there, eh? Did you graduate or are you still there? <laughs> He's still there. <laughs> Sat back, he said, a couple of times. <laughs> Amen, me too. Me too. Still working on that. Trying to learn to be able to get to the place that the last part of verse 11 says, to be content therewith. What do you mean therewith? Therewith had nothing in it. Therewith was not what I wanted. Therewith was not planned. Therewith was not my dream. Yes. Therewith ended up being the emptiness and the void that I found myself in that I said I needed to be content therewith. The therewith wasn't in my plans. The therewith would never cross my mind. Not that I speak in respect of what, for I have learned. I have learned. He learned it this way because he found that when he went through the valley, the same God that was there on the mountain right. was in the valley. Amen. Hallelujah. He found that whenever things was going good and the congregations were big and the people were getting saved by the scores, he found that that same God that was in that meeting was the same God that was in the dungeon with him and Silas, amen? amen. Whenever the, the, the jail began to shake and just one man come and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Amen. He found that the same God, the same God that can, uh, that can raise up, Je that did raise up Jesus from the dead can empower us to overcome all circumstances amen. and all obstacles. I think one of the lessons of life is this, that he's never promised us that he would deliver us from all things, Amen. but deliver us through them. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right, Brother Donnie. He has promised to bring us through them. What a blessed promise that is. What does it matter to you and I if we have to go through it as long as he is with us to carry us through? Uh, I'm off track, but let me hang on first. Let me just, uh, let me follow this rabbit for a minute. Uh, do, uh, try to catch him. Think about, do you remember when uh, Jesus sent his disciples uh, across the Sea of Galilee, remember? And they got out right in the middle, and, and then a storm come up. Now, what in the world was Jesus thinking? Did he not understand that they were going to, I believe with all of my heart and intent. Now, he had went away. He wasn't with them. But he, no, well, one time he was asleep in the boat. This particular time, he sent them on. Yeah. He had went away to pray up in a mountain, and he said, I want y'all to go to the other side, and I'll meet you over there. So you remember that instance, right? Yeah. Halfway across, they get in a storm. They get in such a storm, they, they didn't think they was going to make it. Yeah. And about, I don't know if it was midnight or 4 o'clock in the morning, it seemed like I can't remember the time exactly. Uh, third watch of the night, fourth watch, I don't remember. Uh, they didn't have a watch. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, as they began, as they, in, the, in, the, in the night, as the lightning is flashing, because I believe it had to be lightning because the Bible said they saw Jesus yeah. or a figure of him coming walking upon the water. <laughs> now, the only way I could think that they could see him because they didn't have spotlights, what must have been every time the lightning would flash, they would see a glimpse. Of, can you imagine the first one that spotted him? I'm not going to say nothing to nobody because I, that, yeah, that ain't possible. But, but why in the world, just answer me this, why would he allow them to go through that? Yeah, I mean, don't he love them? In fact, the time, Sister Jeannie, you're talking about when he was asleep in the boat, that was Peter's exact words to him. He went and woke Jesus up and said, don't you care that we perish? Don't you love us? We're going to die out here and you're sleeping. Don't you care? Does he care? Amen. Oh, yeah. Then why the storm? How come he don't take the boat around the storm? 
How come he don't split the storm up and let you just go through with smooth sailing? Isn't it remarkable? I want you to understand and know that the reason that God does, the reason God doesn't do those things is because he wants you to know that wherever you are, wherever you are and whatever you're going through, he may not deliver you out of it. He will deliver you through it. Amen. He will deliver you through it. He may not take you around it. He may take you right through it. But in the midst of it, listen to me. If you're in the storm and... Um, what group is it from Nashville? I can't remember the name of the group right now. The, the guys, they came and they sung and they said, I'd rather be, Royal City sung it. Yes, they did. They, they sung, I'd rather be in the storm with Jesus than on calm seas alone. Think about that for a second. That's not what most people want. That's right. That's right. Most people want the calm sea. That's right. That's right. Without. Him. Not the storm with him. The calm sea without him. God help me out of this. Lord deliver me from this and and I got to tell you that that's not the way God works. Paul said, I learned something because I've been through some things and I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content, to find comfort, peace, and assurance. Contentment. 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 I mean, come in. Folks to be content. They don't find folks that are content anymore. Folks ain't content with their jobs, their preacher. Thank you very much for waking up right then. Wrong time. Their houses, their cars, their you know, their, their spouses uh, are not content with anything in their lives. Uh, always looking to trade it in for something better. And Paul said, I've learned whatsoever state I am in to be content. Verse 12, he tells the story of how he learned. I know how to be abased, he said. In other words, he said, I've been there. I've hit the bottom. I've had nothing before. Can you be content with nothing? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you be content? I know how to be abased. Now, would you prefer nothing with God or would you like to have something without God? There's the question. I've learned. I know how to be abased. And I know how to abound. I know how to not let those things take priority in my life and take me away from God. I know how to be abased. I know how to abound everywhere in all things. I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry. Now he's talking about the very basic instinct of a man's life. He said, I know. I know what it's like to be able to sit and eat till you're filled and still have leftovers. I know what that's like. And not to lose, um, not to lose awareness of where that blessing comes from. That's right. Not to forget what's important. I know how to do that and I also know how to be hungry. I know how to not have my very most basic need met as I think it ought to be met and still be content. Amen. Still be satisfied. Still have blessed assurance that God's going to see me through. Amen. He said also, I know how to abound and how to suffer need. Verse 13. I know you was hoping we'd get there. I can do all things. You ever heard this verse before? 
I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. With what we just read, do you see maybe there might be an application we haven't t- noticed before? Uh, the idea that of, of this verse um, has often been, uh, I don't know, I guess s- the sense that I had was the idea that, uh, that I, you're not going to have victory over situations in my life. This verse when you tie it into the verses that we just read about um, having want and having need, um, um, being able to be content in every situation of life, it seems as though this verse goes on to say, I've learned how to have self-control, temperament in my life. I've learned how to put total trust in God over the circumstances of my life. It's not necessarily saying, as you might have interpreted before, that I can be a super Christian. What it's saying is, I know in whom I have believed, and I'm fully persuaded that he's able to keep that, that I've committed unto him against that day. I believe in whatever area I am, that I can get through it because God is with me and will not leave me. I believe, though the way may be rough, I can make it. Amen. Though the situation may look tough, I'm okay. I'm going to get through it. Listen, though everybody be against me, though I be surrounded by the bulls of Bashan, though there be great enemy that rise up and want to devour me, I am going through in the name of Jesus. I'll be all right. And though the enemy slay me, I'm still all right. Ain't that right? I don't have to worry. And I'm not afraid because the power of God has delivered me to the point that I can do all things even to the point of death without fear and with great contentment. Woo! Help me tonight because I want you to understand something. We all go through problems, right? Amen. We all have things we want we don't always get. Amen. What's that somebody said? The, the girls say it. Mama, did you teach them that? You get what you get and don't pitch a fit. That's what you tell them all the time. You get what you get and don't pitch a fit. There's things we want and we don't always get. Of course, I like to pitch a fit. Amen. I don't like that last part. We like to get what we want to get. And there's not anybody in this room tonight, I don't think, um, that hasn't gone through the process of, of, of being denied. Something that you probably felt like you even deserved. And you go, Lord, why? I don't understand why you don't let me have that. I don't understand why you don't do that for me. I don't understand why you don't give me what I want. <laughs> Amen. I, we, go, we go through those times and, and Paul says in verse 13, listen, this, this is a tough time. And the real success or victory here is not necessarily over the circumstance. Now, I've been talking all night about the circumstance, the storm and the sea. But where does the calmness and the strength really need to come? The calmness doesn't need to come in the storm. And the, cal- and the strength don't necessarily need to come in the, uh, the abundance of, of uh, your wants or your needs in your circumstance. The real strength takes place on the inside. Amen. The real calmness takes place on the inside of us, in our hearts. Amen? Right. So no matter what's going on, listen, what if he chooses not to calm the storm? He's still God. Amen. Hey, listen, and we're still going through, and peace still takes place because it's in me. Amen. 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 Uh, McCamey's singer song says, sometimes he calms the storm, sometimes he calms me. Yeah. Huh? Amen. Sometimes he will settle the situation, but whether he settles the situation or not, Paul said, I've learned to be content. I'm going to get through it. It don't matter if the waves cease or not. Amen. Uh, going through I don't know. I don't know about y'all, but we preach us a good message tonight. Amen. And I want I want you to understand that when you go through this, he said, "I can do all things." The strength and the awareness that come to Paul was that God's going to take me through, and it's not because He's going to change the circumstances necessarily. It's because He's in me, and I have confidence in Him. When we look at it, it says. I am content. Where did we leave that verse? Was uh, verse 11. 
I have learned, uh, he said, therewith to be content. Whatever state, to be content. That contentment was produced because of the confidence he had that wherever he was and whatever he was going through, God was going to see him through it. I don't know. I can't promise you that your circumstances will change. And in fact, uh, this one thing I probably can promise you that you will go through trying times. Amen. <laughs> you will have trials. You will be tested. There will be fires. There will be storms. This one thing you can rest assured, you're not going through them by yourself. Amen. It don't matter whether he's asleep in the boat or he's walking to sea. It just really doesn't matter because you're still not without him. That's right. Amen. Amen. And whether the sea gets calmed or whether the storm still rages, as long as he's on board, I'd rather be in the midst of the storm with him than in calm seas without him. All right, I got to close. Let me look. Just a couple things to share with you. Here's the notes that I got from Miss Sally. She said, first... When you're going through troubled times and trying to find peace with your circumstances. Number one, she said, you must strive to view everything from God's perspective. His ways are not our ways. And he wants us to examine the issue from beyond our normal human point of view. If Big picture. If you could just see it through his eyes. Put your... Put your um, yourself in his sandals, as they say. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, likewise, or so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. That's a pretty big difference. There's a significant uh, amount of distance between uh, the earth and the heavens and God says that his ways are that much greater than our ways. In fact, we can't even measure the distance. And his thoughts are that much greater than our thoughts. So number one, she said you got to view things from God's point of view. Secondly, she said we must pray. Amen. She said we must pray this in particular. Father, what is your goal for my life in this adversity? What is it you're trying to teach me? What do you want me to learn? What is it you're trying to change about me? What do I need to learn? Paul said, I learned to be content. Amen. How did he learn that? Through adversity. She said, the second thing we got to do is we got to pray and ask God, what do you want me to learn in this adversity? To be content? Maybe it's to be compassionate. Amen. You never know. But whatever it is, God, what would you have me to learn in this particular situation? And then thirdly, she says, we need to surrender to the will of God and then rest in His faithfulness to see us through the ordeal. Amen right there. Ain't that where we started? See us through the ordeal. Not, not necessarily around the ordeal, but through the ordeal. Sometimes our lives... She, man, this is great right here. You need to take a note here. Sometimes our lives require a major disruption. Amen. I'd have been okay if she hadn't said major. Amen. Uh -huh. Sometimes our lives require, it's necessary to have a major disruption in order to realign our thoughts with the Lord's. Amen. Amen. Though sometimes it's painful. These times can become our most life-altering moments. Amen. Amen. And that all depends on how we respond. Because His grace is sufficient in all things. I thank you for those notes. That was pretty life-altering right there to me. I can take what I've learned and I can utilize it in my life. And then I can also share it with you because these are principles that can be used by anybody in God's green earth. Amen. Because the circumstances of your life is kind of like Florida weather. Amen. Wait a few minutes. Yeah, wait a few minutes. It'll change. Yeah, more dependable. Things, if things aren't going the way you like, just hang in there. It'll, 
bound to change. If things are going smoothly, hang in there. Someone once said, you're either going through a trial or you just came through a trial or you're about to go through a trial. But you don't have to be afraid. You can be content because of the confidence of knowing that I can do all things through Christ who has strengthened me. He strengthened me because we've been here before. We've been here before. I like battle tested soldiers. I like folks that have been in the heat of the battle and found them to be tested and tried and true. Some folks think that they're ready to go. They think they're ready to face off with the enemy. And they've never, they've never been tested. And the first time somebody looks at them cross-eyed, like this, they get offended. They pull up roots, gather their marbles. That's it. They take their ball and go home. Then there's those that have had the sand kicked in their face. There's those that's been through the fiery furnace. There's those that's been tested by the lions. There's those that have been accused of everything from top to bottom and then back to the top again. And some, some are guilty. And I got to tell you, they just won't quit. Amen. And they find that there's always a reason to hold on because the confidence that God will not fail them. I'm going to encourage you tonight. There's a test waiting. Either you just come through a trial, you're in the midst of a trial, or you're about to go into one. I don't know where you are, but you can be well assured they're out there. They'll pop up when you least expect them. That's what I found about them. It's weird. I despise that about them. Just about the time I think I got it all figured out, the sails are hoisted and we're moving along and man, things are great. Everything and everybody. Now, that's something else you got to recognize. Not only is everything going smooth, everybody's acting right. Yeah. They're behaving themselves. Something ain't right. Everything exactly. going on, man. You know, it's too quiet. You know what I'm talking about? It's quiet. Much too. Something's about to break. And it seems like just in a moment of time, things can go awry. I want you to know you don't have to be afraid. He said that I've learned to be content. I'm satisfied in knowing that God is more than sufficient for me. God will see you through. Amen. I want to encourage you tonight. It doesn't maybe sound like a message of encouragement for me to tell you that you're going to go through a trial. That's not the encouraging part. The encouraging part is that you're going to make it. You're going to make it. He's going to see you through. And you'd rather be in the midst of the storm with him than on calm seas without him. Would you bow in prayer for me and we'll be dismissed tonight. I want to ask God's blessing on you tonight. Father, as we bow our heads, we've heard your voice speak to us from your scriptures. Paul, your servant, let